Hey, what's going on, people? Your boy, man, Mike, coming at you guys with yet another Atlanta Falcons video. Three things that stood out in a loss against the Seattle Seahawks. I know a lot of Falcons fans are just uh, pretty much done with the season for the most part, but look, man, I'm not, man. I got to keep doing what I'm doing, man. I got to give you guys uh, the information, man. Whether you like it or not, it, look, man, this is for the real real ones that's still hanging in there man i know it's tough even if you you don't feel like you want to hang in there just hang in there dog all right this is what i do this is what i do and this is why i do it for people like us even when we absolutely suck we're sitting at one and seven i gotta give you three things that stood out to me and the first one is just the fight in the second half i love what i saw from these guys in the second half i would love to tell you guys we put together a solid performance um first half and second half Defense looked dang on good. The defense looked damn good. All right, these guys gave up three points in the second half of the game. So that tells me it's not necessarily about the coaching. It's about the players. You got to get yourself up, dog. Harry Douglas said it today in a tweet. Everybody want to point the finger at Dan Quinn, and maybe it is. Maybe it is Dan Quinn. But a lot of this stuff goes on the players. A lot of stuff goes on the players. Players got to find a way to get themselves up. Got to get themselves up for these games. So if you're not watching film, you can't get yourself prepared to play a game, then what are we really doing? What are we really doing? You can put all the game plans together all you want, but players still have to execute. You know what I'm saying? So I love what I saw from the secondary Isaac Oliver gave up one freaking catch the entire game. All right, gave up one catch the entire game. He's going to get continue to get better. All right, he's going to continue to get better. I love what I saw from improvement from Isaac Oliver. Still has a ways to go, um, but I love what I saw from him. Kendall Sheffield is another guy that I love. All right, even though he gave up a couple of big plays, but you know he was right there. Sometimes it's just bad luck. Sometimes guys just make great catches. And that's what happened to him pretty much all, all game. But look, man, good coverage, better catch, better ball placement. Things like that happen in the NFL. So not necessarily a, you know, a, a negative in my eyes as far as that is concerned. But I love what I saw from Sheffield as well as Isaiah Oliver. Second one is play calling. You, dirt cutter. You, dirt cutter. Come on, dog. Now, I know a lot of Falcons fans are going to say, like, why can't Matt Ryan do this? Why can't Matt Ryan put up this type of performance offensively? Well, there's a couple of things. One, you have to understand that these guys are with two different skill sets. And offensive coordinators know that Matt Schaub cannot, he cannot throw the deep ball. So what do you have to do? You're forced to do this. You're forced to dumb down the playbook. You can't take these long developing, you can't take these long developing deep drops with Matt Schaub because he can't throw that ball that deep. Matt Ryan, you could do this. Okay, Matt Ryan, you, he can throw the deep ball. Matt Schaub can't do it. So he's forced to get rid of some most of his playbook. He's forced to involve everyone in the offense. And this is what I say all the time. Offensive coordinators get, they have huge egos. They want to make their offense work, make their philosophy work. And a lot of players suffer because of it. They don't want to build a deep uh, uh, offense around players. There's very, there's very few offensive coordinators that want to build their offense around players. Maximize their abilities. And Dirk Cutter is not one of them. He wants to make his offense work. Let's take deep shots, long developing plays, where you have to have a good offensive line to make it work. And now you see what the offense looks like when the ball is gets out quick, it's reminiscent of the Patriots offense. Get the ball out of Tom Brady's hand and let these guys run, use their athleticism, and do what they do best. Make plays. So if 
Dirk Carter could continue to do this with Matt Ryan, get the ball out of his hands, let the players make plays, the Falcons offense is going to be okay. Falcons offense is going to be in the third one. I like what I saw from KZ, and I like what I saw from Ricardo Allen. KZ is just a natural free safety. Now, I know we know that he does not like to play free safety. He wants to be near the action. But, bro, you're no good at near the action. You're not as good near the action. You're a natural free safety. You need to be around. You need to be the center fielder. That's what you do best. And it's, com- it's, it's time for you to come to the realization that's what you are. So with that said, Ricardo Allen playing strong safety, playing near the off the deep uh, near the line because of guys like 59 who don't know what he's supposed to be doing. He's still clueless. Here it is, week eight, and you still clueless on what your assignment is. You know, don't know what you're doing. Yeah, Ricardo look, Allen, Ricardo Allen look comfortable near the the line of scrimmage, playing corner, uh, strong safety. He was all over the place, and he looked like the Ricardo Allen that we remember. So, with that said, man, those are the three things that stood out to me. But let me know what you guys thought about the game, Seattle, the Atlanta Falcons. What stood out to you, man? Um, what should the Falcons do? What should they not do? Leave your comments below. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Your boy, man, Mike is out, man. Peace. Whipping the Prince of Diana. Double cup bling, found her. Oh, my old God.